Hello everyone. Happy Sunday. I'll be with you in a few seconds. I'm just giving everybody time to pop in. Hi Sandy. Happy Sunday. Hi Dixie. Okay, I'm going to get started. Um, I'm going to be demonstrating the Stamparatus tool again this afternoon. Um, I did post a live video on the Stamparatus a few days ago and I'm going to try to do once a, uh, once a week. I'll try to show you something new. So today I'm going to be doing vertical stamping. And of course we have the Stamparatus tool. Just to review a little bit in case you missed my first video. When you're not using your Stamparatus tool, you can keep one of the clear plates hinged intact, but the second one you should always remove and lay on top. Because this one, if you pop it back in there, it's not made to lay flat. Hi Kelly! Okay, today's stamp set is background bits. I um didn't, I don't even remember getting this one. I had not used it yet. It's the first time I use it. This is the card we're going to be making. As you can see, I have the vertical stripes going that way. And then I also have the little dots here going uh, down vertically. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm also going to show you how to do the scallops here with the best badge punch. I mentioned that on Friday when I did my Friday Folds class. I'm going to show you how to do that. And I just want to give you a few tips before I get started. Now, as far as the Stamparatus, somebody asked me the other day if you can use rubber stamps on here. So the red rubber, because I've been using photopolymer all along. The red rubber, what you do is you remove this foam pad. It's removable and I am using the red rubber today so you're going to see the grid now isn't it nice to have this grid but when you cover it with the foam of course you can't see it so one tip I have is on these grid sheets you can cut a piece seven inches by seven inches and it can lay on top of your foam if you need um, the lines to help you because the vertical and horizontal lines do help you when you line up your stamp. So that's one tip for today. I won't use this today because I'm going to be removing the foam. Now I'm also using the Paper Pumpkin Stampin' Spots. I did forget to mention the other day that you can buy these three in a pack. No color on them. They're uninked. And you can ink them the way you want. Now all of my paper pumpkin ones I am storing in our clear cases and I'm storing them by color. So that's another tip if you want a storage system. I think that's all I have for tips right now. Okay so let me move this over. Let's go over the cardstock pieces. I have Calypso Coral 11 by four and a quarter, and we're going to score that at five and a half. Whisper White, I have two pieces measuring five and a quarter by four. Pear Pizzazz and Garden Green, five and a quarter by one inch. Delightful Daisy Designer Paper, five and a quarter by three quarters. And I've gone ahead and cut out two of my circles using the layering circles. Now this one measures three and one eighths. It's Calypso Coral. And the white measures two and three quarters. So I've already gone ahead and cut those for you. We're also going to be using Calypso Coral and Pear Pizzazz markers. Pearl Jewels. And then I got three ribbons I'm using. I don't know if you noticed right here. I layered two of the ribbons and then tied linen thread. And I'll show you how to do that. And if there's anything else, I'll mention it as we go. Let me just get my scoring tool. So the first thing we're going to do 
is score the Calypso Coral at five and a half. And then we're going to fold that. Okay, now we're going to use the Stamparatus. So let me bring in my magnet. Now, because I'm limited on room, I'm going to just use one. But normally, because I'm stamping two with the Stamparatus, I would use both. I just don't have enough room on my counter. And then this is the image we're using. It's got the little stripes. I'm actually going to move this over just a little. And I'm also going to lay a scrap. I don't want the edge to show. That's why I'm moving it over a little bit. And I'm going to lay this down so it's nice and straight. Now, one thing that I didn't like about my car when I was done is there's a lot more white space up here than there is down here. And when I lined this up, I actually lined it up in the center of the hinge. I'm just going to go up just a little bit. Press that in place. And the two colors I'm using for the stripe is the Garden Green and Pear Pizzazz. So let me ink up the garden green. And again, if you uh, missed my first video, these are perfect to do your inking. They're so small and they really don't make a mess. Press this down. Now I'm going to go down one hinge. I'm going to wipe my stamp with my chamois cloth. Use the pear pizzazz. And we're going to stamp um, the stripes first and then the little dots. And then I'm going to have more that I'm going to show you with regular stamping. Again, I'm going to move down one hinge. So this vertical stamping, wait a minute, I got, got the wrong ink. This vertical stamping is actually called hinge stamping because we're using the hinge to line everything up. Let's see how I'm alternating colors. Oh, thanks, Gloria. You like the way I wrote my list out um, for the measurements. That stays up a little bit longer, so it's probably a little easier. Okay, and we got one more. So see how easy and evenly spaced this is. It's just so, so neat the way you can do this. Last one. Karen, my, uh, my chamois cloth is always wet. Let me show you what it comes in. When I ordered it on Amazon, it comes in this tube. And what I did is I cut it up. I have about 10 pieces in here. And when I'm done using it, I rinse it under the faucet and stick it back in the container. That way it stays damp. Okay, so we're done with the lines. Now I'm going to bring in the little dotted image. And I'm going to lay that way at the top. And as you can see, I just have a little bit off to the side. And we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to ink and move down a hinge. And they're all going to be lined up the same way. Kelly, yes on your um, your question. I didn't want to confuse you guys. What you could have done, if you want to stick with the same color, move down two hinges and do all of the darker green first. And then you can go back and start where this one is with the pear pizzazz, go down two hinges. So you could stick with the same color. Good question. I thought maybe I would confuse you guys if I did the the um, going down two hinges, so I didn't go that route. Okay, one more. OK, 
Okay, so how easy was that? So we did vertical this way and then we did, or I should say horizontal and then vertical this way. So let me put this away. Now I'm going to glue this to the front of my card. Okay, now a little trick to doing the scallops. We are going to use the uh, best badge punch. Hello, my hubby. He's in the living room watching. I always tell him to get on just to make sure he can hear me. So he's my little, uh, my little coach in the living room. Now what I've done, this is one inch wide. I've gone ahead and measured that right in the center and drew a uh, pencil line at half an inch. And then I made a little tick mark in the center. You're not going to see this because we're going to flip over when we're done. So I'm lining up the little, the little curve goes right on the line and then the center goes in the center of the, uh, the punch. Okay. So that's the first punch. Now we're going to come over here and see where the end is. You're going to line that up right on the end of your punch. Look at the beautiful scallops. How easy. And then we'll do the last one on this end. Now I'm going to, I didn't want to flip it over because I lose my pencil line. Do the same thing on this side. And one last one. Isn't that neat? Look how easy that was. So the pencil line is the important part that really guides you. Same thing with this one. Start in the center. And the reason I start in the center, I want my ends to end up the same way. I don't want to have a partial scallop on one end and then a full scallop on the other end. Oops, I need to cut that one just a little tiny more, tiny bit more. Oh, I messed that one up. It's okay. You guys know what I'm doing. That's the beauty of live videos. If I make a mistake, I can't go back and edit my video. Okay. Now we're going to bring the designer paper over. And I'm going to glue the pear pizzazz. Make sure that's all lined up. Flip it over again. And we're going to add the garden green. And it looks like a shadow when we're, we're done gluing that. Oh, that's neat, Sandy. A Debbie and a David. We call each other the double D. Isn't that funny? Okay, now I'm going to glue this on this end. So see what a nice, nice way to add a little border with a punch. Okay, now I need stamping dimensionals. And I'm going to glue the scallop in place. And I'm going to center that. Okay, now see how I have three different colors on this, well, with the sentiment. This is the image I'm using. We're going to be inking with markers today. If you've never done that, it's really easy. All you do is color on the image. And then we're, um, we have to use the huffing technique. Now what that is, by the time I'm done coloring this, some of the ink might dry up a little bit. So I'm going to show you what that is. I'm sure some of you guys are familiar with it. 
And if you've um, ever done the Lamaze breathing, it's kind of similar. Okay, so now I'm going to just huff on it with my breath. And it re-moistens the image. And that's what that looks like. Now I'm going, oh, you know what? I don't know which one's which. This is the dark one. I'm going to do the sentiment with the dark. I've seen people put circles of cardstock underneath and I think that's what I need to do because I'm not good about uh, putting my lids back on. Okay, good thing I tested that because it was upside down. That's what this paper's for. And then all we have left to do is glue that in place. Now I'm also going to do that on my inside layer. So I'll bring in my white. And we're going to color the stamp image again. What I like about the coloring with the markers, it gives it like a watercolor look. So I'm going to do this uh, twice to do the bottom of the inside layer. I want to apologize too on my bunny card the other night. I forgot to stamp the inside. I had designer paper all ready for it and I totally forgot to finish the inside. So you can see how quick this is. I'm going kind of fast because this has been inked twice already, so I know it's not too bad. Okay, that's the bottom. And then I have the thank you for the inside sentiment. Okay, I'm going to let that dry before I glue it in place. Now, let me show you how I did the ribbon. Oh, I do too, Linda. I think, like I said, that the, um, the coloring with the markers gives it that watercolor look. Okay, so I'm cutting two pieces of ribbon about an inch, an inch and a quarter, laying them on top of each other. And then I'm going to take the linen thread, wrap it around, try to keep it in the center, and tie a knot really, really tight and see how it gathers it. And then I'm gonna do the double knot. And then I'm just gonna play with it to like like the way it looks and then all I did is one layer at a time if I can get it separated I cut that one at this angle and then the one below it at a separate angle so the green peeks through And then we'll cut the linen thread off. And then I'll just bring in my little glue dots, scrunch one up with my finger. And then I'll add just a little bit of um, the multi-purpose uh, glue on the back. And that goes right here. So see how it doesn't take much to dress this up? Just a little, a little um, smidgen of ribbon like that. And then lastly, the little pearl jewels. Now I had a ton of these pearl jewels uh, from the old item number. I haven't gotten any of the new ones yet, so I'm not sure. I don't know what the new ones look like. I'm not sure if um, these little mini ones are still in there. Somebody must know. 
And I noticed that one of my pearls moved when I moved this around. Okay, so all I have left to do is to the, uh, glue the inside of the card. Oh, thanks, Dixie. It, like I said, it doesn't take much to add a cute little bow. There. So that's it. Um, I do have a couple more things I'm going to show you later for the Stamparatus. I'm, like I said, I'm doing one at a time. Just so you guys have the chance of trying it out. So I hope you like the way that I did this card. And I look forward to showing you some more. Thanks so much for spending some time with me this afternoon. And I will see you on Wednesday. I have my Design with Debbie class. And I did post all the supplies you need. So I hope to see you then. Have a good remainder of the day.